Hi, I'm Peter, and this is Go Verb Noun. If you're watching this, hopefully you've already seen part one of the interview with Dr. Carroll. If you haven't, here's a link, right here, somewhere, approximately. I just did that, sorry. Anyways, you should go check that out because in that part of the interview, he talks about stuff specifically related to his channel, Healthcare Triage. In this part, which you are now presently watching, he's gonna to talk to us a little bit more about the YouTube environment in general. And he's going to give us the perspective of somebody who is kind of an outsider, which is really cool. So, stay tuned. Well, I guess not really stay tuned, you're already tuned. So, hmm, well, just keep watching. Okay, let's check it out. Has there been anything that surprised you about being on YouTube? Yes, um, it's been, this has been by far the biggest surprise of anything. We, oh, I should say the blog was always a surprise too. Cause you know, when you develop, when people actually read or watch or listen to what you say, it's always shocking and rewarding. Well, maybe not for some people, but it is, it is for me. Um, when we started talking about it, uh, I was, uh, you know, you have no, you have no sense of what success looks like. Like, I don't know what the proper number of views is. And when you're coming in, you know, when you're talking to somebody like John, who, you know, runs YouTube, as far as I can tell, uh, the bar set pretty high. So uh, I'm unbelievably sort of like heartened and overwhelmed and made humble by the sort of immediate feedback and number of subscribers and number of viewers that we've had, even almost since the beginning, um, and that more and more people come to watch is, is the same. It's just, it's great. And it's, it's a group of people that I'm not otherwise exposed to. I, you know, you, you mentioned sort of the, you know, the other jobs that I do. Um, I, I, I sort of exist in a very academic world. You know, people call what we do sort of the ivory tower and we're academia and I, you know, most of the papers that I write in general are in peer reviewed journals and, you know, no one's really going to read them, but even those that do are usually experts. It's not like I spend a ton of time in general um, in my, what I do here, talking to the general public. Uh, but I do through other media forms. I do a decent amount of radio, um, TV or once in a while, but the YouTube is just directly speaking to people. Um, that's great. We fail so badly in, in my area and in an academia in general, I think, in talking to people um, and the general public and trying to break down the walls and the idea that everything has to be filtered through three other groups that sort of we're over here, you're over there. Um, YouTube allows you just to go. Uh, and that's new and it's great. And I find it to be one of the most rewarding things that I do. Do you see yourself as someone who's bridging the gap between academia and everyone else? Well, it's funny because our blog we started with the idea of the blog was we wanted to translate research for for more lay people. We wanted, I mean, right right now, I mean, it's you know somebody writes the paper and then maybe a journalist covers it and then somebody else. And there's there's a lot of steps. And so our blog was entirely about you know we want to write directly to people and we we still thought probably pretty engaged people um, who had an interest in health policy or an interest in how research excuse me research worked, but we would. Uh, translate research for more lay people. So that's what the blog was about. Um, and it turns out there's a need for that because, I mean, the blog sort of gained popularity um, and that's how I wound up writing for a number of other sources. I, I see healthcare triage in the same way. It's like I think that my niche at this point, um, and, and I love doing it, is helping to translate research so that regular people can understand it. And, uh, um, not just the results, but I want to talk about how we do the research, why we do the research, why this is good research and this is bad research, why you know this one has limitations that we consider, why we should value that one more than this one. Um, so it's not to say, dude, vaccines don't cause autism, don't just just they don't go away. It's to explain all of the studies that have been done. Or, you know, one of our first ones was on uh, sugar doesn't make kids hyper. And I use that not to say, look, it's a myth, get over it. Um, but to talk about why randomized controlled trials are important. Why, you know, that's how we can talk about causality. Uh, that's how we can really prove that this does not cause that. Um, and there have been randomized controlled trials proving, you know, sugar doesn't make kids hyper. And that, that if you have that level of high quality research, that's, that's how you talk about causality. Um, and that, you know, when people say, you know, GMOs cause this, no, they don't. There's no randomized controlled trial. And, you know, what you're looking at is research that might have an association, and here's how it's actually still very flawed. And to talk about the nuances of that, that's, 
important. And that's uh, something I think I get to, to sort of put on my health services research hat and talk about um, how research gets done. I, I, one of my things, the things that I do is I teach medical students and residents about you know, how to read uh, the medical literature and how to understand research. And so I've, I was doing this for reasonably high level, well-trained people who did this as a career. But you know, breaking that down and backing it up so that we can talk to everybody about that, that's, that's somewhat what healthcare triage is about. Let's talk about the perceived value of YouTube as an educational medium. Well, it's hard. I mean, in the academic world, no joke, breaking out of the mold and, you know, it's, it's and I'm, this is not meant as a complaint at all, but, you know, I don't know how much value my regular job places on this stuff. Um, you know, in the old traditional academic model, you know, it's very clear what the metrics of success look like. And YouTube show ain't even close. Um, not even like writing some of the stuff I write for major media organizations. With the blog, they don't care about it at all. Um, and I don't mean they don't care in the sense like, well, but it's like, but that's not that's not the metric. Um, and so, you know, people have to spend a lot of time focusing on the stuff that matters for career advancement and for sort of making your way in the world and, and getting the research done and do, and that's important. But um, this is all my. I, I I don't want to say it's a hobby, but it's uh it's because it's, it's so much more valuable than that. But it is, the value has to come from within. Um, you got to want to do this. And I, it's hard to sort of make that leap. And I, I know deep down inside as well, it's like I, I know I could not make that leap without the amazing abilities of, of Stan and Mark uh, and, and, John, and everyone else that works on healthcare triage in the studio level. I mean, if I just put up a camera and just tried to film myself, it would not be healthcare triage. It just wouldn't without Stan and without Mark and without, you know, John's and put everybody else, it just, it would not be what it is. And uh, it takes that bridge. Um, and so it is, you know, there's, there is always an, a certain amount of luck in the world um, to sort of make those kinds of connections. But I talk to people all the time from the academic world, like, well, I'd love to do that. How did you get started? I'm like, I don't know how to break this to you, but it's like, you know, it is not buy a camera and start filming. That's necessary, but not sufficient. Um, I think it takes, uh, unless maybe, I mean, unless you, of course, have all those skills that stand up market. Have, maybe somebody has all of that together. I do not. Um, I don't know that I could do healthcare triage without. I know I couldn't do it without all of them. Like they're, they are instrumental to its success. It's a team effort, um, and so, you know, getting other people in academia to sort of make the leap to do this, I, I haven't seen a ton that do it. This is part of all the way by being in an academic medical center. This goes on all day. Um, uh, I, I don't know that I've seen a ton that are as successful or do this as well. I mean, you do, you do know of the ones that are amazingly successful. Um, and a lot of me, and some people can do it. They put up a camera and they go. And I'm blown away by them. Um, I, I just always assume there must be more infrastructure behind it because that's what we have. Um, and that's what I know is, has been necessary to, to sort of make our show as successful as it is. Uh, but I think it's great that people are trying. And I think that it's, you know, maybe, it, maybe more people can do it on their own. Maybe it requires more collaborations. Maybe we need to figure out how to do that. Um, it's exciting. We'll see what happens. I think it's vitally important. I say all the time, it's like, uh, I love my day job. I think my day job is incredibly important and, I, and I, I love it. I mean, I say that not, it's not like I do this so I can do that. I love it. Um, but, you know, sometimes I think the, the impact, the change the world impact um, now as opposed to like way down the line, a lot of the stuff like healthcare triage or the blog or the writing, I think that that has immense value and it's unbelievably rewarding. Um, and I think stuff like that is incredibly important and when I see others doing it as well, I, I cheer. Um, I think it's great. And uh, I think, you know, the quote is, you know, he's right. Um, I think Carl Sagan is, you know, it is important, um, but we don't have enough of it. Uh, and I. I'm not exactly sure what the secret sauce is to get more of it, but we're trying. Let's talk about folks who make YouTube their life. I'm just, I'm always fascinated by this because it's, um, part of it is I think it's, it's a generational thing where it's like, I got to own, I'm a bit older than 
than most of the people putting out YouTube stuff. And I don't feel old, but you know, when John makes a video talking about how at like whatever mid thirties he feels old, I'm like, well, I'm gonna be 42 this year. Um, makes me granddad of the internet, it feels like. But um, um, I just came to this so late, and it's like, and I sometimes when I talk about it, it's like I I love healthcare triage, but it, it's like. Um, and there's, I don't know how to say it out loud without it sounding terrible, but it's like I have not a real job. I just have other jobs. Like I have, you know, I come to work and I'm, you know, uh, you know, and I'm professor of pediatrics and, you know, and I'm an associate dean and I have all these responsibilities for the School of Medicine and for, for all the research that we do and everything. It's like, and that, you know, that's sort of like my face here. It's just like that's the job. And this is incredibly meaningful to me, but it just isn't my job. Um, and so many people who are on YouTube are so passionate what they do and they want it to be their job. And I think that's awesome. I don't know how to make that work. Like I just don't, I don't, I came in, it's not that I came in, maybe it is that I came into it late. Like I don't know how to square that circle of like, if I started all over again, what I, and of course it's like, I don't think, I could not do this, what I do in healthcare triage. I know how to make this work. Um, and this has sort of allowed me to do that uh, and it's, if you weighed like the, the the scale of things of like how you know how much of an impact do I feel like I'm making and how much value there's so much for the amount of time that I spend and for the you know for whatever it is like quality for time it's, it's, there's almost nothing it almost can't be beaten by that um, some of the other writing I do I feel like does that as well but uh, it's incredibly valuable it's just not my job um, it's not sort of the way that I make a living. Um, and I'm amazed at how many people are trying to figure that out. It's a new world. I'm happy to be a part of it, but I'm still to this day feel like I'm visiting. I don't know when I'll feel at home. When I went to VidCon, um, I felt maybe it's just I'm, the perception I'm wrong. That like it was when I'm on the EDU panel. Like that's everyone's like job and passion. And I'm like, oh my god. Like that's okay. I I wish I knew. I wish I knew how to make that work. Um, um, or maybe it's just that I'm too ingrained in sort of the old model. Um, or maybe it's just that I like what I do too much to sort of give that up as well. Plus, I still do believe that all this other stuff that I do gives me the sort of the weight and the knowledge to do healthcare triage. But uh, it's fascinating. Like, I'm, I'm amazed at the sort of the new world out there. Uh, and I'm, I feel unbelievably grateful uh, to John and Stan and Markin for sort of bringing me into it, allowing me to, to play. Um, I know if it wasn't for sort of that quirk of luck, you know, about a year ago and, and just happened to be on Twitter and, and sort of John making the Vlogbrothers video and, and sort of bringing some information on the blog, none of this would have happened. It's also, it's one of those quirks of fate and luck. I live in Indianapolis. First time living in Annapolis has truly paid off. Um, Cause uh, and I love my job and I love living here, but you know, that is absolutely like, you know, lightning in a bottle. I just, I'm in the right place at the right time and everything else. Cause if, you know, John didn't live in Indianapolis, if the studio wasn't here, uh, if all this amazing, people don't know that like so, like this huge YouTube thing exists and like it's right outside of Indianapolis in the same way I'm sure they don't know about in Missoula. Um, but it's amazing and it's lucky. And I feel very privileged and lucky to be a part of it. Let's talk about YouTube celebrity and how EDU folks were treated at VidCon versus the regular YouTube celebrities. You will never convince me that I am a YouTube celebrity. It does not matter how much, it doesn't matter. It just, it will never happen. Like I just can't, I just can't wrap my head around that. I refuse to accept it, I refuse to believe it. It's just not possible. Um, I was, I was at VidCon and I, I, my wife and my eight year old daughter came and we saw like what happened to YouTube celebrities and it's insane. I mean insane. Um, and I, I know intuitively like that happens to, you know, to people like John and Hank and, and everything else. And, but anytime anyone came up to ask if they could you know, talk to me or you know, take a picture or anything else, I just, it, my brain shuts down. I refuse to like, I cannot, it's not possible or happen. So it's like, I know that I, I intellectually I get this, but you know, I, it's, I don't know. It's not, it just seems like it's still out there. Because again, it's all relative. So I, I, you know, I know, you know, people who truly are, you know, YouTube celebrities, and everything else feels like it's like, meh, who knows? Um, but I think I think you're right. The EDU people do get um, treated a bit differently. I think it's partially because I, 
I want to talk to people about healthcare triage. I'm, you know, this is what I do. I want to talk about the research. I want to talk about the evidence. I want to hear, uh, you know, what people think or, or how the videos are. It's not, um, I'm interested in talking about the ideas, not what we do on healthcare triage. Like, I don't, I don't understand the people who want to talk about, oh, there's, so, you know, that they, you know, that they just love the show because it's celebrity. I, I want to talk to people who want to talk about what we talked about and the content and um, how we use research or how we use evidence or does that change how they think about health or does that change how they think about policy? Um, and so, I, I, you know, it's, it's, I think people even when they approach from a perspective of celebrity and they just sort of want to talk about like, oh, I, you know, I'm so excited, I'm such a big fan and I love that, don't get me wrong, but I'm always like, tell me why. Like just, I want to know what, what is it? Like what is it about, about the show? What, which episode was it? You know, which, did it change your mind? Did it change the way you think? That, that is fascinating to me. And I think that there's probably a little bit more of that maybe with the EDU people than there is just with the celebrity, which is awesome for them, I suppose, but I don't get that either. So concludes part two of Dr. Aaron Carroll's interview. I think it's really cool to see people in different professions coming onto YouTube and explaining what they do. Because I think that if anything gives people a good idea of what the world is like or what a job is like, people giving their own first-hand perspective is probably the best way. You can go onto the internet and you can read job descriptions and message boards and all that stuff, but a first-person perspective is awesome. If you could see somebody from any profession doing a YouTube channel about what they do or even about their field, what would you like to see? Let me know in the comments below or on Twitter or Tumblr or Facebook or, I don't know, Carrier Pigeon. What would you like to see demystified in terms of entire fields, if not specific questions? All right, guys. Thanks for caring. I'll see you next time. And go Verbenown.